morning Amen. have the freedom to gather together and to have the I don't know if it's knowledge or the revelation I guess or the truth to gather together not in any other name other than Jesus. Amen. Oh, you can, you can get a crowd together in a lot of different reasons, a lot of different ways. But unless you gather together in the name of Jesus, you're wasting your time. Hallelujah. Last week we were talking about why the devil wants to destroy America. We preached that Sunday morning and then some of the events that unfolded this week, the bombings in Boston, the um, explosion at the fertilizer plant, which I guess that wasn't a deliberate thing. I don't know if they finished their investigation on that or not. I'm not sure what caused that, but the Boston bombings certainly were deliberate. And someone made a statement this week, and I wish they were wrong, but I'm afraid they're not. After the bombings that took place at the Boston Marathon, someone made this statement. I'm not sure who it was. I know, I'm sure you could look it up and find out who the quote's from. But they said that they were afraid that this was the new normal in America. The threat of bombs at big public gatherings and terrorist attacks on the soul of America. And I'm afraid they're right because of the fact that the Bible says that all nations that forget God will be turned into hell. That's what we talked about last week. We talked about how that the enemy has not been able to destroy us with other countries invading our country Although there is an invasion going on, silently, through the means of immigration, they have wheeled the Trojan horse into our public squares. And those that hate America come out every now and then, but one day they may come out in great numbers. They call them sleeper cells when they talk about terrorist groups. And I'm afraid the more that we allow the immigration to just continue to slide and the way that we do things in our nation, and I know we've always had an open door for people to come here for freedom and for people to come here who are oppressed and that are going through things in their country and being tortured and tormented and, and all of that. But when you allow them to come into your country that hate you, that want you dead, Someone said once, well, you deserve what you get. For going to sleep and allowing the enemy to infiltrate into our nation. And God doesn't have to, people talk about, well, it's God's judgment. God doesn't have to pour His judgment out on a land that forgets Him. On a land that forsakes Him. Because they will be consumed of their own sin. Consumed of their own lust. Consumed of their own hatred. As Brother Sleeves was talking about hate today. People driven by hate. They don't even, if it really comes down to where you question them, they don't even know for sure why they hate. Mm -hmm. They just hate. Mm -hmm. Amen? Some white people, they just hate black people. Some black people, they just hate white people. Some people of other nationalities just hate you because you're American. They don't know you from Adam. Really? They just hate you because of where you're from. Where you were born. And God does not have to pour out His judgment on America. America will destroy herself. Like the quote that we read last week, Abraham Lincoln said that if America is destroyed, if our freedoms fail, if we falter, it will not have to be done. It will not be done from outside. He said it will be done from inside America. And we're seeing that today. We're seeing people attack not just the Word of God, they've been attacking that for years, but attacking our Constitution. And one of our forefathers said that he believed that God's finger was in the writing of the Constitution that brought them together of one mind to bring the Constitution of the United States. 
God's finger in that. But now that's outdated. That's old. That's, that was written a long time ago. It doesn't apply today. That's what some of the new way of thinking is. I know that many today don't, don't think that that will ever happen. But we, begin, we, we are creeping closer and closer to the place to where that... It's just an old document. It doesn't carry as much weight as it used to. It's not as important as it used to be. And I told you last week that the enemy, the greatest weapon that he is using right now is to attack America, not from foreign soil, but from inside. To attack her morals. To cause her to forget God. How do you forget something? Out of sight, out of mind. Get, it, get God out of our public square. See if people won't forget Him quicker. Get God out of our schoolhouses. Indoctrinate our children with Darwinism and with, with, with uh, socialistic ideas. Indoctrinate our children with humanistic ideas. Carnal things instead of the things of God. Don't tell them that this country was founded upon Christianity. When, when you go back and look at the quotes of our founding fathers, there is no way for you to deny that they founded this country upon God and faith in Jesus and religious freedom. All of their quotes. Go back look at them. Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington. All of our founding fathers quoted on faith and God and Jesus Christ and faith in the Word. The father of our country said it's impossible to govern a nation without God and the Bible. So to say that America was not founded as a Christian nation or was not founded upon faith in God is just crazy. But see, when you remove that from our curriculum in school and according to what I hear most Christian teachers talking and most people talk whenever they talk about the things that are taught in school, there's not so much emphasis put on the history of America anymore. Mm -hmm. When I was being raised, when I was in class, Brother Sleece, we read about George Washington and we read about Abraham Lincoln. And they said there's not so much of an emphasis put on that anymore. No, because it's another weapon the devil uses. If you can get, if you can take the the history of our nation, the found what it was founded upon, if you can take that out of the public schools, then you can raise a generation that has no regard for the foundational faith that this country was based upon. If you can take God out of the classroom, then you can indoctrinate a generation of godless people. And a godless society is a society that has no peace. A godless society is a society of fear. A godless society is a society of terrorism. And the farther you get away from God, the closer to hell you get. The farther you get away from Jesus, the closer to hell you get. The farther you get away from His Word, the easier it is for you to forget God. So they take Him out of our schoolhouses. They protest if you have Christian displays in our public square. And the enemy sits back and all, he just, he just lets you destroy yourself. <clears throat> He'll put thoughts in the minds of educated men. Well, there's no way there could be a God. We have to be able to explain creation. We have to be able to explain the existence of man. So let's take God out through education. Take Him out of our colleges. Take Him out of our schools. Take Him out of our churches. We've replaced the gospel with psychology, with positive thinking, with positive thinking. All you have to do is think positive and your life will be great. Reason, exactly right. Take him out of the seminaries and make them cemeteries. Now there's no God in that. Little by little, taking God out of the view of man and man will soon forget God Take him out of our classrooms. Take him out of the public square. Get rid of the Constitution. Mess with the Word of God. Water it down. The Bible says, blessed is the nation. And we read this scripture last week. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. In turn, we can say today that cursed is the nation whose God is not the Lord. The 
wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Out of sight, out of mind. You might wonder today, how can, how can a nation forget God? Just hide Him. Get Him out of their sight. Take Him out of their thought. And we read last week in the book of Romans, and I want to touch a little bit on this today before we finish this up, and it's not going to be very long. But Romans, the first chapter, this is showing us a picture of a people that forget God. I'm not going to read the whole thing. We read the whole thing last week, but Romans 1 and 21. I want to read a couple of scriptures out of here. Romans 1 and, 20, 1 and 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. What are we talking about? We're talking about forgetting God. We're talking about a nation that forsakes and forgets God. When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful. We've never lived in a more unthankful generation than we do today. Everybody's always complaining about what they don't have instead of giving thanks for what they do have. Everybody's always kicking against everything. It seems like everybody you meet is angry about something. Everybody you meet hates something. Well, sure, because when you remove God, you remove love. And it is replaced with something. Strife, hatred, malice. When you remove, because God is love. That's how people can go into a schoolhouse. And you can't do that because of love. You do that because of hate. You're driven by some spirit besides God's spirit. Go into a schoolhouse, just open fire and kill a bunch of people. Kill a bunch of little kids. Because a nation that forgets God not will just, not will just be cast into hell, but will be turned into hell. A place of torment. A place of no God. Godless. No peace. When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It says they professed themselves to be wise. They became fools. I told you last week, when you stand before the nation, when you stand before the world and you beat your chest and say there is no God, you might as well put a shirt on with an arrow pointing up at your head saying, here stands a fool. Because the Bible says that God, that the, that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. If you don't believe in God today, you are a fool. You are foolish not to believe in God. You can rant and rave and use your vile language and you can laugh and mock and say you're old-fashioned, you're outdated. Yeah, you're a fool. That's the way a fool talks. They became foolish. They professed themselves to be wise. Darwin professed himself to be wise when he came up with his theory that I figured it out now, guys. There is no God. That's silly. But listen to what I figured out. We all came from monkeys. Yeah. Yeah, you're really showing your intelligence if you believe that. It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in God. Hallelujah. Drop down to verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to think about God. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which was not, which are not convenient. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to think about God. That's the way America is today. I asked you last week, why do you think America, why do you think in our nation... There is such a push to remove the Ten Commandments from the public square. There is such a push to remove the Ten Commandments from our schools. There is such a push to remove the Ten Commandments from our courtrooms. There is such a push to, I don't want to see your cross. I don't want to see your Ten Commandments. I don't want to hear about your God. And there's a very simple explanation for that. 
Because if they don't think about God, they don't think about judgment. If they don't think about God, they don't think about their sin. But, hate this on every, in every square in America. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. And that might prick somebody's conscience today. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord, it goes on to say, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Well, no, no wonder they don't want that on, on their walls. No wonder they don't want that in the public square. Because when you remove the Ten Commandments, when you remove God, you don't have to feel so bad about your ungodly lifestyle. Listen to me. Every one of us can, can, uh, can uh, relate to this. At a time in your any time in your life when you weren't living the way you should be living for the Lord and not trying to live for the Lord, you didn't want to think about God. Because when you did, it reminded you of the way you're living. When you think about God, you must think about the fact that you're going to stand before Him one day and you must think about your lifestyle. So they don't want the Ten Commandments to be nowhere around. But listen to this. Honor thy father and mother. They don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That pricked the conscience of a lot of people today. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. <clears throat> Do everybody some good to have these hanging in their homes if they don't have them hanging there. And that's one of the things that really makes you kind of smile and scratch your head. Such a push for people to have the Ten Commandments in our courthouses, in our schools, in our public square. We were in the church house full of people one time and I asked them how many people had the Ten Commandments hanging in their homes and I don't know, maybe one or two people are all that's raised their hand. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness or lie. Thou shalt not lie. People lie to you today at the drop of a hat. Can't believe almost anybody you talk to. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Oh my. Don't need to be reminded of that. that nor his manservant or his maidservant or his ox nor his ass nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So get them out of the public square. Because if they're before us, they remind us, Brother Rodney, that we're not living the way we need to live. They remind us that one day there will be a judgment. So the best way to forget them is to do this. Get rid of them. Throw them away. Do away with them. We don't want to think about God because when we think about God, we think about our ungodliness. We don't want to think about righteousness because when we do, we think about our unrighteousness. We don't want to think about judgment because when we do, we think about what we're going to be judged for. So get rid of him. They didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. And if you've ever wondered why that's, what that scripture meant, that's exactly what it meant. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge because when they thought about God, they thought about their sin. When they thought about their wicked, whenever they thought about God, they thought about judgment and they thought about they would have to be judged for their wicked ways. They didn't want to think about God. They don't want to hear you talk about God. They don't want to hear you talk about Jesus. They don't want to hear you talk about judgment. They don't want to hear you talk about after death, after this, the judgment. Because then they know we'll have to stand before them. That's something that the devil uses to get a nation to forget God. Throw it all in the trash can. Get it out of your sight. He doesn't have to do anything else. Once it gets a nation to forget God, the nation will be consumed by their own sin. Get rid of the Bible. Get rid of prayer. Get it out of our schools because He wants the next generation to be a godless generation. A godless society. A socialistic country. A communist country. Let terrorism become the new norm because of the hatred, because of the wrath and the malice. Why? That's because these are the things that happen when a nation forgets God. <clears throat> when a nation forgets God, the Bible says it will be turned into hell. And we talked about the 
things that America has done, the missionaries that we've sent, the help that we give to other countries, the beacon of light that she has been to people suffering in other countries that wanted to come here not to destroy America because they wanted to be... See, we've got a whole new group of aliens coming over, for lack of a better word. We've got a whole new group of foreigners infiltrating our land. When the Irish left Ireland for the, because of the Great Potato Famine and flooded our harbors, they'd done so because their country was dying. They had to go somewhere where there was hope, where there was life, where there was a way for them to survive. Others that have made the journey across oceans and, and risking life and limb came to America because they wanted a place where they could live free. They came to America to live free. Now we have groves of people coming to America to destroy America. To bring her down. And we just sit on our hands and say, well, everybody's free to have their own opinion. Yeah, even if that opinion is to kill everybody except for your own kind. Somewhere you have to draw a line in the sand and say, hey, you ain't free to do that. <clears throat> But now, not seeking a place of refuge, but seeking a place to carry out their diabolical plan to destroy the great Satan, to destroy America with their hatred. When a nation forgets God, they forsake God. 1 Samuel 8 and 8, you don't have to go there, I'm going to give you these scriptures as we close. 1 Samuel 8 and 8 says, According to the works which they have done, and talking about a people that had forgotten and forsaken God. Talking about the people that God brought up out of the land of Egypt. He said, they have forsaken me and served other gods. A nation that forgets God will forsake God and cling to other gods. America has done just that. Say, Brother Billy, we don't have a golden image like Nebuchadnezzar. We don't have a a, a uh, national thing that people bow down to. Oh, yeah, but we have things like money, success, fame, fortune. All of the things that the Bible says, the love of money, the root of all evil, the cares of this life, the things of this world, things that thieves can break in and take and that mobs can corrupt. <coughs> There's a lot of idols in America. We even have a, you know, we had people set up as idols. Even have a television show <clears throat> called American Idol. The very word idol itself pertains to putting something up that deserves to be worshipped. Anything you put before God has become a problem for you. A nation that forgets God will forsake God and cling to idols. A nation that forgets God will forsake God and follow their own ways. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 8, uh, 28 and 20 the, said the Lord would send cursings and vexation and rebuke in all that they set their hand to do. Why? Until they were destroyed. Why? Because of the wickedness of their doings. Because they had forsaken Him. Listen to the wording of that. Until they be destroyed. Until they were destroyed. Why? Because they had forsaken the ways of God and had followed their own ways. That's what happens when a nation forgets God. They forsake the ways of God and they follow their own ways. They follow their own ways. Second Timothy 3 and 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's why the church house is not full this morning. <clears throat> it was more pleasurable for them to lay there in bed than to get up and come to church. Or it was more pleasurable for them to hit the fish, the, the Creek bank so they could fish. Whatever the excuse was. <laughs> lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's what happens to a nation that forgets God. She forsakes the things of God and clings to the pleasurable things of the flesh. 
Talking about what happens to a nation when she forgets God. She forsakes God. Something else that will cause you to forsake. When you forget God, you will forsake His house. 2 Chronicles 29 and 6, For our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God, and have forsaken Him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the house of the Lord, and turned their backs. When a nation forgets God, she will forsake God's house. Now I'm not talking about our big mega churches that set up shop in basketball arenas and football arenas. I'm talking about true houses of prayer, true sanctified places of worship. Don't want to go somewhere where the Word of God is preached. Because, when, see, that's why you don't get very popular when you preach the truth. Because when you preach the truth, it reminds people of the things that are not right in their life. When we look into this word today, it's a mirror, the Bible says. It'll show you what's wrong with you. Just like Brother Rodney looked in the mirror this morning and fixed his hair and pretty himself up all so nice. He done that because he could see what was wrong with him. That's what happens when you look into... That's why most Christians' Bibles lay on the pew from one church service to the next. Because if they open it up during the week, they'll see that the way they live during the week goes against the book that we preach out of on Sunday morning. Ooh, that went over like a little balloon, don't it? Forsake God's ways and cling to our own. That's what happens to a people that forget God. A people that forget God will forsake God's covenant. Deuteronomy 29 and 25 says, then men, then men shall say, Because thou have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which He made with them when He brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. When you forget God, you forsake His covenant. When you forget God, you forsake His word. When you forget God, you forsake. What is God's covenant with man? It's a blood covenant. That's what caused you to come into fellowship with God once more. That's, that's the covenant that has been made with mankind, the blood. We live in a society today that don't like to talk about the cross. We live in a society today that where many churches, I don't know how much it is now, but I know a little while back, you were hearing a lot about churches that didn't want the blood songs in their hymnals, that didn't want crosses in their sanctuaries. Why? Because the enemy don't want you to think about the covenant that God made with man. Because the enemy knows that when a nation forgets God, it will forsake the covenant that God made with man. And will seek after what? Other covenants. Other ways. Other ways to make it. Other ways to get there. Their own righteousness. Their own ways. Their own goodness. Their own doctrine. Their own gospel. They will forsake and forget God's covenant. Ain't but one way this morning, but it's easy to get people to fall for other ways when you remove the way that God has made from their sight because out of sight, out of mind, they did not like to retain God in their own knowledge. And they, became, they professed to be wise. They became fools. A nation that forgets God will forsake His commandments. I wadded that paper up and threw it in the trash up here and felt bad about it. But that's exactly what America has done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Get it out of our sight. Because if we don't think about God, we don't have to think about our wickedness. Because see, if you believe there's no God, then there is no ramifications. There is no penalty for the way you live. But when you begin to think about hmm, if there's a God, I might have to give an account for the way that I live, for the things that I've done. So it's easier on your conscience to think, well, there ain't no God. Till you hit your deathbed or you hit hell and then you realize, oh, I was wrong. There is a God. Ezra 9 and 10 speaks of the people that forsake the commandments of God. And we've talked about why. They forsook the commandments of the end, the same, way they, the same reason they forsake them today. 2 Peter 2 and 15 says, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. When you forget God, you forsake the right way. You turn from His way and turn to your own. So we see the attack, this, is, this strategy that the enemy is using on our nation. It's working. It's working. We have never lived in a more violent day in America. Our schoolhouses have never been filled with more violence, 
more drugs, more sex than they are today in the year 2013. And you can trace all this back to the fact that little by little, inch by inch, America has turned her back on God. Take Him out of our classes. Take the Bible out of our classrooms. Get rid of God out of our public square. It'll be good for us. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding. And where's the church being while all this happens? You might ask yourself today. I can tell you where the church is. She's asleep at the wheel. She's drunk on the things of the world. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. I don't necessarily believe that he was that Peter was talking about alcohol right there. Although I don't believe you should be drinking. But I think he's talking about being drunk on the cares of this life. Be sober. You can be drunk and out of your mind. You don't have to have touch no alcohol. Drunk on the lust and the pleasures of life. He said, be sober. Be vigilant. He's telling you to be aware. Why? Because your adversary, your enemy, your foe, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So if you want to know where the church has been, she's been asleep. She's drunk on the things of the world. Turn on your Christian networks and see what 80% of the preaching is about. Money. Riches. Fortune. Prosperity. That's where the church is at. That's where the church is at this morning. The church... Not sober, not being vigilant, not aware of their adversary, the devil. Jeremiah 6 and 13, and I'm closing. Listen to this. He's describing here a, a people that have forgotten God. And it hasn't stopped with the government. It hasn't stopped with the public square, but it's infiltrated into God's house, into God's people. Listen to what he says, Jeremiah the 6th chapter, the 13th verse. For from the least of them unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, where there is no peace. 6 and 15 says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abominations? <clears throat> Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither, did they, neither could they blush. Neither could they blush. See, that's another, that's another effect that a nation that forgets God, that's, that's something else that happens. You no longer <clears throat> blush at sin. You can have your gay pride marches right down the streets of America's cities. Something that used to be a shame. <clears throat> something that used to be... People hid it. They were ashamed of it. Now they'll take off their shirt. They'll hang up. They'll hold up a sign hollering, I'm gay. I'm proud of it. They no longer blush at sin. Neither could they blush. Therefore, listen what happens to them. All nations that forget God will be turned into hell. Therefore they shall fall among they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Sooner or later, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Sooner or later, you will either be justified by the blood, or you will be condemned because you rejected the blood. Brother Sleese is right. Those that have went to hell, those that are going to hell, they will one day make the trip before the throne. But their name will not be found written in the Lamb's book of life. And the judgment will be that you forgot me, you forsaken me, you rejected the sacrifice that I made. You rejected the blood. You turned it away. You turned your back on my sacrifice that I made. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. 
That's what happens to a nation that forgets God. That's the bad news. The good news is, is what I want to close up with today, the same thing we did last week. Is it too late? No, it's not too late. It's not too late for a people that know God to seek the face of the living God and ask Him for a move once again in this nation that will start not from a briefcase, not from some motion picture. You know when the Passion of the Christ came out several years ago, they all said, oh, this is going to cause a great revival. Well, it came and faded, just like all the other Hollywood fans that come along. But what will last is when the church hits her knees and begins to seek God once again. When His people that are called by His name humble themselves and pray and seek His face and turn from their wicked ways, then He will hear from heaven. Then He will heal our land. When we begin to seek God again, Tuesday night we had prayer meeting. Brother Mike was supposed to preach. He called me, or he texted me Monday and said he wasn't going to be able to be here. So after the events that took place, I told him we felt like we need to have prayer meetings. So that's what we did. We're going to have to have more prayer. We're going to have to have more truth being preached from our pulpits. That's the answer today. The answer is more truth. The answer is more prayer. The answer is more seeking the face of God. Like the song that we sing, we need our spirit-filled preachers to teach us right from wrong. We need some old-fashioned seekers who will pray all night long. We have to turn to God. That's our only hope. That's our only shot. That's our only chance today. Our only hope is to turn to God. Our only hope is to turn to God. The God of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that gave His only begotten Son so that you wouldn't have to go to hell. The God that became flesh and dwelt among us. We have enough compromising preachers. We need some that will stand for the truth. We have enough church people that are drunk on the cares of this life. We need some church people that will get serious with God. And that'll have a prayer life. I'm not talking about coming to church on Sunday morning and bowing your head and praying with the congregation and then going out and never praying again until next Sunday. I'm talking about a prayer life. We need some people that'll read the Word of God somewhere besides just in church on Sunday morning. We need some people that'll that get them some sermons, get them something to study, get them, find them a place to pray. Used to be people had prayer closets. We need some people that still had prayer closets or places to pray where they go and seek God for a nation that has lost her way. That's the answer for America today. A nation that will humble themselves before God. A nation that will pray, not just when bombs hit our towers, a nation that will pray and seek God's face and turn from their wicked ways, He will hear from heaven. He will heal their land. He will forgive their sin. That is the hope for America today is to turn to Him that has the ability to save us. To turn from our wicked ways and to turn to God. Repentance. Old-fashioned, yes. Still works. Still works. Turning from your wicked ways and calling upon God. As long as there's breath in your body, there's hope for you. As long as there are people, as long as there is a remnant in America that still believes in the true God, that still seeks the face of a living God, there is still hope for America today. But I won't lie to you, the time is waning. The clock is getting closer to midnight. And sooner or later, it will be too late. But it's not too late yet. Sooner or later for you out there listening, It'll be too late, but it's not too late yet. If you're listening to us, if you're watching us, it's not too late for you. If you'll turn to Jesus today, He is there. There is still time. There is still hope for you today. Someone else have something this morning? <clears throat>